Welcome back to Honest News. If you'd like to follow in the reading of God's Word, Psalm 80, beginning with verse 14. Psalm 80, beginning with verse 14. Return. We beseech thee, O God, of hosts. Look down from heaven, and behold, and visit this vine. Let's read that again. Return. We beseech thee, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, that you're not finished yet. There's still work to do. We know, Lord, that we grow weary, your people. We grow weary at times. But we also know, Lord, our help comes from you. You are our help. You are our strength. You are the one that enables us, that gives us what we need to labor for you. We pray, Lord, for that anointing of the Holy Ghost that will quicken this word to your people's hearts. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, the precious blood of Jesus, as we minister your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What a prayer. Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine. And the vineyard which thy right hand hath planted, and the branch that thou madest strong for thyself. It is burned with fire, it is cut down. They perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, upon the son of man, whom thou madest strong for thyself. So will not we go back from thee. Quicken us. And we will call upon thy name. Turn us again, O Lord, God of hosts. Cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. There is a quickening, folks. He is able to quicken us to call on him again. Don't quit. Don't give up. There is a quickening for us. There is grace for us in this hour. 
You may not feel like going on, but the Lord will give you the grace to go on because he gives grace to the humble. Are you listening? To those that are humble, his humble ones, God will enable, God will give strength. For when I am weak, then am I strong. We must lean on the Lord, folks. We must lean on him. The world doesn't lean on Jesus. How many know that? Amen. Those that profess Jesus, they don't lean on Jesus. It's we that know without him we can do nothing. Even Jesus, the vine, the true vine that we read of here in Psalm 80, 19, he did nothing of himself. How many know that? He did nothing of himself. The vine, all because of this vine. Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine. Aren't you glad for Jesus? Aren't you glad that Jesus didn't quit? Aren't you glad that Jesus didn't give up? Aren't you glad? He said, I can of my own self do nothing. What I see the Father doing, that I do. In the garden, Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. He didn't come to do his own will. He came to do the will of the Father. Hallelujah. And you and I, just like this vine was made strong, the vineyard which thy right hand hath planted and the branch that thou madest strong for thyself. He's the branch. I mean, know that. In the Old Testament scriptures, we read that Jesus is that branch. But how many know that you and I are branches? Amen. To be made like unto him. And even as he depended upon the Father to produce, so must we depend upon the Father to produce. Amen. We need that quickening that comes from the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. We need a quickening from the Lord, brothers and sisters. Without him, we can do nothing. Amen. God is able to preserve us, to keep us through the fire. Amen. He's able to keep us. This vine went through the fire. This vine was cut down. The Son of Man, amen, Jesus was crucified. Amen, aren't you glad it didn't stop there? Aren't you glad? They perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. If you do not accept Jesus Christ and his provision, what he has made available to us, there is a rebuke of thy countenance. Are you listening, folks? There's only rebuke, but it doesn't stop there. It's destruction. We're in the time right now of the rebuke. As many as I love, I rebuke and chase and be zealous, therefore, and repent. Praise the Lord, folks. I like this part so much. Listen to this. Thy, let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand. Jesus is at the Father's right hand. But how many know that's what Benjamin means, son of my right hand? Are you listening, folks? Benjamin's a type of the overcomer. Hallelujah. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, 
God chooses those on his right hand. Upon the Son of Man, whom thou madest strong for thyself. Why does the Lord make us strong? For himself. For his glory. Not for us, but for his glory. Amen? Hey, listen, if God is going to use you, he's going to make you strong. He's going to quicken you. He's going to give you what you need, amen, to get the job done. Hallelujah. That's why a lot of God's people today are not being quickened because they're not working for the Lord. They're living for themselves. They're not servants of the Lord. Amen. They're not seeking God to find what vineyard they're supposed to be working in and what field they're supposed to be working in. They're not interested in working. They're not interested in laboring. The laborers are few. Are you listening? The laborers are few. Though the fields are ready, though the fields are white, the laborers are few. No one wants to work in his field. Amen? All his children want to sit around his table. But no one wants to work in his field. Amen? The Father says, push away from the table. Look out the window pane. Just beyond the house of plenty lies a field of golden grain. He that winneth souls is wise and shall shine as the brightness of the firmament forever. Are you winning souls for Jesus? Are you a soul winner? Hallelujah. So will not we go back from thee. Have you been thinking of going back? There were those in Jesus' time that went back. Amen. You will go back if he does not quicken you. If he does not give you the strength, if he does not give you his grace, you will go back. Listen to me, people. You can't make it alone. You can't make it on your own. You need his quickening. You need that life of God. You need the touch of God. I'm telling you, people, from experience, I'm telling you this from example, I need him. I need his quickening. I need his quickening to preach. I need his quickening to live for him, to be an example. I can't do anything without his quickening. Quicken me, O oh Lord, according to thy word. You will not go back. You will not draw back if he quickens you. Amen. We need that quickening. And we will call upon thy name. If he quickens us, we won't give up. We'll call on his name. Let's face it, folks, we don't really want to call on his name, do we? No. But if he quickens us, amen, he renews our strength. Amen, we'll want to call up in his name. We'll want to call on his name if he quickens us. Look at this verse of scripture. We won't go back and we'll call on his name if he quickens us. It's all dependent upon his quickening. Now the scripture says, if the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwelleth in you, he shall quicken. He shall also quicken your mortal bodies. I shared with you yesterday, Elijah, under the juniper tree, despairing for life. If the angel did not come and Arise and eat, Elijah. If he didn't come and quicken him with that food, he would not have continued to go on. He was despairing for life. Are you listening to me? Whether you understand it or not, you're not going to make it without the Lord's provision. 
You're not going to, I'm talking to believers. You're not going to make it without his touch, without his quickening. You're not going to make it without the anointing. And I, I don't feel like I'm doing this message justice. I really don't. Not the way I'm looking at the scripture. This is a powerful scripture. I wish I could deliver it the way that I'm reading it. My Lord and my God. That just tells me that I need more of him. To deliver this word the way that it was given, the way that it was received. Listen to it, people. If you're not quickened, you can't call upon his name. If you're not quickened, you will go back. All his disciples went back from him. All the disciples left him, and Jesus turned to his own immediate 12, and he says, will you also go away? Amen? And what did Peter say? Where are we going to go? Thou only has the words of eternal life. Amen? Oh, there's all kinds of religion today, all kinds of cults, all kinds of uh, ministers out there today. Where's the word of eternal life? Where's the word where there's a quickening to your spirit? Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, I feel your presence, Jesus. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Is that your cry? Turn us again. O oh Lord, God of hosts, cause thy face to shine. If his face does not shine on us, we're not going to be saved. Amen. If he doesn't turn again, are you listening? We need the Lord to return and look upon us that his face would shine upon us that we might be saved. You've heard me share many times, I, I don't believe once saved, always saved. I don't believe that. I believe the scripture makes it clear that they that endure to the end, they that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. You've got to endure. I'm talking to believers. Just because you got saved one day doesn't mean you don't have to endure to the end. You can't be saved and then go back into sin and stay saved. You've got to stay in the light. You got to walk in the light. You got to continue in the truth. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples. Amen. This idea today that you can get saved and do whatever you want to do is right from the pit of hell. I believe it's one of the greatest strong delusions out there, making people believe they can be saved and continue in sin. No, he said, You've got to continue in the light. You're not continuing in the light if you're in sin. Amen? Are you listening, folks? If you're continuing in the light, you're sinning less and less every day. That's been my experience. You're disobeying God less and less every day if you're walking in the light. If you're continuing in the truth, the truth is making you free. Amen? You're not becoming more and more of a slave to sin when you walk in the light. The more you walk in the light and you walk in the truth, the freer you become. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, that's been my experience. So will not we go back. So will we not go back. If he quickens us. So many today going back. Demas 
hath forsaken us, loving this present world. Demas went back. Amen. He was one that was following on with Paul. He left, went back to the world. He loved the world. Oh, my Lord and my God. Brothers and sisters, we must endure. We must continue to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We must endure trials and hard times. We must endure temptation. Amen? That we might receive the crown of life. Praise the Lord. We're in the time of endurance. Amen. This is not a sprint to the finish line. This is a race of endurance. Praise God, the same pace. Not fast at one moment and then slow at another moment and inconsistent. No, we've got to be consistent in running this race. Praise God and set the pace. Praise God. Amen. And patiently endure to the end. Hallelujah. He is faithful that called us. Do you hear what I said? He's faithful that called us, and he will also do it. Amen. You're in a good place when you're weak in yourself, because when you're weak, then you're strong. Amen. That's what Paul the Apostle learned. Amen. Jesus said, I can't do anything by myself. And he told you and I, the branch can do nothing of itself except it abide in the vine. Amen. This needs to be our prayer. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. See, in the first part here we were reading, they're telling, they're, they're praying, they're saying, return. They're asking the Lord to return. But in the last part, the prayer is, turn us again. He didn't go anywhere. He didn't move people. We look in the book of Revelation, it says, return to your first love. He didn't go anywhere. He didn't move. Amen? Return to him. Return to him. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Draw nigh to him, and he'll draw near to you. Amen? And if you can't draw near to him, call on him to quicken you so you can draw near to him. You can't do anything without that quickening. You won't have a desire to. We've got to be quickened by the Lord. That's what the psalm is all about here. The psalm is all about the fact that they are depending on that quickening. Amen? Depending on the quickening of the Lord. But I think that's so remarkable that at the beginning it says, return. They're praying, return, Lord. Re return, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine. But then at the end of the prayer, turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Notice the first time they don't mention Lord. Amen. Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts. How many know he's the covenant-keeping God? He's not just God. He's God to the world. Even though they don't accept him as their God, he's still their God. They don't believe it, but he is. But to you and I, He's the covenant-keeping God. He's the Lord. And see, the prayer got straightened out at the bottom, at the end here. Turn us, 
O Lord God of hosts. Hallelujah. The Lord of hosts. Amen. The Lord of hosts. Cause thy face to shine. Smile on us. And we shall be saved. Amen. If the Lord's not smiling in our direction, we're not going to be saved. We don't want the countenance of his rebuke, do we? How many know the Father is looking for fruit? Amen. He has long patience for it. He's waiting, amen, for the latter rain. Until he received the early and the latter rain. Brothers and sisters, the early rain's already come, and now we're waiting for calling on the Lord for that latter rain, for that quickening, praise God. But if the Lord doesn't shine, if he doesn't turn towards us with his countenance, with that face to shine, we're in trouble. I'm not interested in I mean, if that's where I'm at and that's what I need, that's great. The countenance of the Lord in his rebuke. But brothers and sisters, how many know there's something better than the countenance of the Lord's rebuke? Amen. There's something better if we please the Lord, if we please him. We won't perish at his rebuke. We won't perish in his countenance. Amen. Every eye is going to see him when he returns. They're going to cry out for the rocks to fall on them. Hide us from him who sits on his throne. They're beholding him. They're beholding his countenance as he comes with the angels in his glory and with all the saints with thee. But he's coming in his displeasure. He's not smiling. But brothers and sisters, this should be our prayer. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Cause thy face to shine and we shall be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn us again. Turn us again, Lord. O oh Lord God of hosts, turn us again. Cause thy face to shine and we shall be saved. That's favor. How many know in the countenance of the king, there is favor? Amen? And God's favor comes to us as the latter rain. In his countenance, there's favor. In the countenance of the king, there is favor. There is latter rain. There is quickening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. There to sing forever. Of his saving grace on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Oh, my Lord and my God. 
to live in his presence. That's what his countenance has to do with. To live in his presence. That's where the quickening is. In his presence, in his in the countenance of the Lord, where the rays of his glory shine forth under the shadow of the almighty brothers and sisters, there's a quickening. There's restoration. There's healing. There's deliverance. Are you listening? This is where redemption takes place. As his face shines upon us. Shine on us, Jesus. Shine. The son of righteousness. To arise with healing in his rays. That we might grow that we might grow up, brothers and sisters, and tread the wicked under our feet, under the soles of our feet, like ashes under the soles of our feet. You won't grow if you're not spending time in his presence, before his countenance. We need those rays. We need the rays. The wings. We need the rays of the glory of the Lord. It's those rays of his glory. Are you listening? It's that very light, that very glory of the Lord that will change and transform and heal and deliver and cause us to grow, brothers and sisters. Praise his name. The world today is looking at the sun, the S-U-N. Oh, they worship the sun. That's where life comes from, they say. But what about the S-O-N of righteousness? Amen. Praise the Lord. They that sat in darkness saw a great light. And light is springing up. Amen. The light of life. Oh, my Lord and my God. Life. Quickening. Resurrection, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. This doesn't mean anything to you if you're not dying to self. Got to be a death before there's a quickening. But if you're one of those that's been dying to the flesh, you understand what this message means. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Lord God Almighty. In the countenance of the king, there is favor. God bless you.